This is Miss Tallulah. So we are a few days old. We were born eight pounds, five ounces. So this newborn sleeper will not last long. So there's a little bit. Oh no. Oh no, there's a little bit of length in the sleeves if you were to stay in this longer. I think she was 21 inches. And um, there's a little bit of length in the legs, but she's doing the froggy legs, so you can't really tell. But I think it was a good little size. So stick around, and I will show you how to make this sleeper. It's a free pattern. I just love it. You're so good. You don't need this sewing machine. This is the one that I have not killed. And whew, how long have I had this, sweetie? I don't even remember. No it really has been heavy duty. So sing your heavy duty, but whatever <laughs> sewing machine you have, great. Um, unless you want to spin forever. And even then, I think hand stitching with knits is kind of, I, I think you will regret it. But if that's all you have, that's all you have. So sewing machine. And then um, you need half a yard of stretchy, like knit fabric. Um, if you um, are just kind of dealing with stuff in your fabric stash that you already have, it needs to stretch at least two ways, as in when you pull it in one direction, but four ways is even better. This is a four-way stretch. Um, I'll put a link for what I'm using here. This is actually a yard, so I will um, show you how to cut on a different piece of fabric, just so you believe me that you can do this on half a yard. You don't need a yard. Um, I just really liked this fabric. It just, I don't know, it just seemed a little girly, and I've had two boys in a row, and it's been a long time since I got to have a little girl. So pink is coming, people. Um, and then you need a coordinating thread. You don't need all of this. You can choose to go, um, this is the cheapest route. It's the most time consuming route. You would need one sew on snap. It has two pieces to it. So this is one option that works totally fine. I've done lots of them that way. And this is the other option. You would need um, snap pliers and um, whatever corresponds with your snaps. These are 7 16 snaps, and um, you can get decorative ones or whatever, but I've just gone plain Jane. Um, the silver hardware is um, works just fine, and it doesn't call a lot of attention to it in the garment. So anyway, so you'll need either the pliers and the snaps that correspond, or the, the sew-on snaps. My zippers just came in, and I am so excited because I just think it's um, such a good deal. It's like for the price of one to two zippers, I get 10. Um, I guess a drawback would be if you're looking for a really specific color and you, whatever, you know, but you can get the exact length you want and an assortment of colors and, and it's just way more economical for me. So like I'm doing children's clothing with this. So um, this one is the closest to the fabric that I need but it comes with a black and a white if you're doing more basic things, a little more grown up of a palette. But um, anyway, I just don't think you can beat that price. And then pens and fabric scissors. And that's it, the free pattern and this stuff. Okay, I'm going to go wash this. Pretty much every time I get fabric to sew with, I will wash it on warm, unless it's something like pleather or really, really sensitive because I know that this is going to end up in my kids' laundry and it will be washed on warm. And I, if it's gonna do color running, I want it to do it now and not ruin other clothes. I want it to just run this thing. So I'm gonna wash this on warm, unscented baby detergent and dry it. And then I will come back after that. First thing you need to do is follow the link in the description and go print off your free pattern on the Modern Homemakers website for the baby sleeper. This is the newborn size and um, so there are nine pages and I'm just gonna pick one that's I'll pick page one here um, anyway as you were cutting this out you want to see and keep the black line so see how the black line is still intact with the pattern for everything that you cut out otherwise it might be a little too small I don't know that would add up all those lines so keep the black line and then um, I'm gonna step off for a minute and cut all this out and then I'll show you how to tape everything together. So this is page one and this is page two. I'm gonna bring them over here where it's a little easier for me to reach. 
And once again, I kept all the black intact. Well, most of it, you know. It's been a long time since I was in kindergarten, so I don't know if my cutting skills, you know, are perfect. So you can see there's a little bit of imperfection as I try to line these up, but um, yeah, it's gonna all be fine. Except for this horrible tape dispenser. Uh, here, here's a negative review. I got this at, um, I think Office Depot, Office Max, they keep merging things, so I don't remember what it's actually called now. Anyway, um, and I got it because it's pink. I mean, hello. But I have to hold where it pops out, and then I have to push down in order to tear a piece of tape. It's the dumbest thing ever. Do not get the poppin' tape dispenser. Side ramble. Okay, so that is A, connected to B, or page one, connected to page two, however you want to think about that. And um, then this is page three and page four, or C is going to connect to D. Once again, just do your best to try to line that up. And then I'm not using the world's supply of tape here. I'm just doing enough that I can pin the project to the fabric. So there you go. There's the next piece. Now we've got page five. It has two pieces. We don't need to do anything with the, t the tab. We just need E and page six has F. I feel like that's a little bit of an angle, so. Cause I want it straight. It's kind of like each level of the process. The better you do it cutting your paper, the better you do it cutting the fabric, the better you do it sewing a straight line. All of those things will make the end product better. But you know what? I'm also not perfect, so you don't have to be either. All right, so there's that, and then I think this is page seven. You don't have to do anything to other than cutting it out. Same thing, page eight and nine. They are just individual pieces. Okay, I want you to set all of these pieces to the side. So this is half a yard. Um, got this at Joanne's if you like this in their knit section. And um, this is how I have done it if I am using a specific half a yard. I've also made several of these where I had more fabric to work with and I, you know, I kind of fold things to whatever fabric I have. So if you'll notice over here where you can see the white, that is because I have folded the fabric in half. So um, I'm breaking my own rules here, but let me explain this. The reason I have the arrow going this way is because if you um, really, really care about the direction of your print, it might really bother you about this inside piece um, in the sleeper. However, as you can see, when I zip it shut, you don't see that piece. <laughs> so I always like to use the minimal amount of resources because I know um, I'll give you a fun bonus video at the end of this video. I'll try to remember to include the clip, but I have actually cut out of half a yard of fabric for the newborn size. I can get a onesie and a sleeper if I do things um, very carefully because there's all this extra stuff in the middle. So I always like to use the least amount possible. So I'm ignoring my arrow, but I want you to understand why I put that arrow for the fabric direction on there. You gonna help me? Okay, had to pause, we got crying boy. Oh, we're so sad. We're so sad. Oh, are you gonna help mommy? You were sad you weren't helping? Yeah, okay, here we go. Um, so as you can see, the print on the arm, you know, the arms go down and they go to the side. They're not up and down. So I have intentionally turned the fabric sideways and that way it's kind of still in the flow of the front pieces. Woo, oh, don't undo what I had over here. Here, let me pick you up, okay. And then cameraman, if you can pan over here, my little helper has moved some things. Once again, I had to fold in half. You can see where the white is. For the back piece, um, which is C to D, and I placed on the fold here, and then right next to it, these guys only need, they don't need any folds, so. A and E, the front left and right pieces. I just like to sit up next to each other. So you would pin all of this, 
and cut it out. Oh, I also want to go in and point out, so if you see down here, anywhere I have these black triangles, they're for notches. Um, I like to go ahead and cut the paper with a notch because sometimes I do wacky things like my pattern pieces upside down or whatever just because of how much fabric I have. You don't have to do that. I did it again here on A and I did it here on the back piece right next to D as well. So that's totally up to you. But um, pin these, cut them out, and then we'll come back. But I'm going to use my other fabric. I just wanted to show you guys on a half a yard. Uh, I'm not concerned about you figuring this out if you have a larger piece of fabric. Oh, you're so heavy. But I definitely, um, with the smaller yardage, and you know, you might be able to get this done with a smaller scrap. It just really depends on the directionality of your print. Like if this was a print that ran this way, instead of this way, you know, it would get trickier. You would just have to keep following. Um, like this is a piece that needs a fold, so you'd have to fold up like this and you could totally make it work with what you have if you have scraps laying around. Just play around with it, don't cut before you get it all figured out. Okay, so I have washed and dried and this is a full yard. So I wanted to show you, I've laid it out totally differently. Since I have all this excess fabric, I wanna leave a big chunk of that for later projects. So I wanted to be really efficient with how I cut it out even though I have more fabric. Um, so I have folded over, you can see at this point, far enough for the biggest piece, which is the arm. And then I was able to fit everything else in. So this is the back piece, everything that needs two. Um, so the arm piece, um, I don't need, I need two tabs, I need two of the feet. I don't need two of the crotch piece, but it fits there and it takes less fabric that way. So I'll just discard one at the end the two feet and the neck and zipper, neck binding, zipper edging. So those have to be on a fold. And then I have the other two pieces just on top of each other. So this is the front left and the front right. And then I'll have this huge piece, which will be more than half of the yard left over. Like this is the half point. So anyway, that is, I think the most efficient way to do that. So I wanted to share that as well. We're gonna start off with um, the back piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out the pins. I've got all the pieces cut out now. Make sure you cut your notch here or that'll bite you later. Need that. And I'm gonna open this up to where I see the right side of the fabric, the pretty part of the fabric facing me. And then, oh, actually, I'm gonna open this up until I see the, just like you'd be wearing it. So this is the inside and the pretty side is on the back because this is the back piece. Then I'm gonna take the front right piece. I guess I could have taken my pins out ahead of time. Pardonnez-moi. I just find that I have to lay them on top of each other this way just so I make sure I have it right before I start sewing. I've done it every time as I was working on this pattern. It's like, I can't think of an easier way to explain it. So think Pledge of Allegiance, even though this looks like the left side, this is actually, if you raise your right hand, this is the right side. So, and then the piece that says front left, E. because this is the side with the left arm. Okay, so this is kind of a, a glimpse to what your sleeper will look like, but this is where it gets a little bit tricky. I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna hold and kind of flip it so the shoulder pieces are now there. So these points connect and I'm gonna grab it Oops, I'm gonna to totally miss that one and flip it. So I was holding, I'm gonna put a pin. Along the top here, if my fingers can work. 
There we go. And then the same thing over here. And then I will straighten this all out just so you get a quick visual. So this is the back piece. Now you can see facing me. And then this is the front left piece is actually on the left when it's inside out. And the front right piece is actually on the right when it's inside out. And then we're gonna take each of these shoulder pieces over to the machine. Everything I sew in this newborn sleeper is going to be, I think it's an eighth of an inch. I'm terrible with math. If you look real close down here, I am lining up with the hole in my presser foot. Yes, eighth of an inch is what all of these are set to. I don't like to waste fabric, so it would have been easier if I'd done a quarter, but you know, here it is. So I have it set to a straight stitch. I've got like a three length, you know. I'm gonna go just a little bit and then I'm gonna back it up because it's over the edge there and then keep going straight. And I'm gonna go all the way across. It's so again, always staying lined up with this hole inside of the presser foot, so it's an eighth of an inch. And then if you just flip it, a little bit less threads to cut and I'm gonna line up again. I'm switching to a zigzag. And a zigzag. Not over the line, just over the square or the square fabric to the side. And you can see we've got our straight stitch and our zigzag just to keep that from going away. I am trying, because this is a baby project, to keep all of my um, threads trimmed as I go. I would often leave those for the end, but we had, oh, which baby was it? Was it Izzy? We had one, our first one. We had um, one baby where a hair got wrapped around their little toe and it was really scary because we hadn't noticed that they could have like lost that toe. Do you remember which kid that was? Neither of us, we were going on about to have number five here. So apparently they all run together. <laughs> I've apologized to my mom. I used to get so upset when she calls us by the wrong kid name. Okay, once again, lining up. I'm gonna back it up a little. I'm gonna that. And then flip. Zigzag along the edge. Okay, step one done. We're moving on to the arms next. So this bottom part of the sleeve, we are going to zigzag on both of them. So the top is curvy at the top, the bottom is flat. So just a quick zigzag on both of those. It's really fun as I was figuring out the order. I tried multiple orders and it's like everything is so small. And it's like, how can you put this thing together? in a way that your hands can still fit uh, and you can still fit the fabric through the machine. So hopefully it works for you too. <laughs> okay, I've got them both zigzagged. And the next step, I'm gonna flip them both where you see the wrong side. And I've got that bottom section that I zigzagged. Once again, I'm keeping up with all these threads as I sew. And if you look on the pattern piece, I have a dashed line here, and that is how much you're folding up for the seam. So I didn't feel like making you mark your fabric or any of that. So here's my high-tech system. Take your fabric, roll it up where you think, no, I went a little too far, and then fidget until it is that width. Then I'm gonna put a pin on. Ow, this is what I work with. The cat literally just jumped up onto my sewing desk. Not cool, Katniss, not cool. If I was in a training moment, we've been trying the water bottle. That's what my mom always did, but we are not succeeding there. Of course, we're not having consistency either. Okay, so I'm lining it once again up on both sides. And I will do this with both pieces, but I'm not gonna make you watch that. Now you have a choice. Um, it totally depends on 
your thread that you have chosen. Maybe you're doing a thread that really contrasts in a fun way. Maybe your thread just blends in and it doesn't really matter. Um, but you can do just a simple zigzag here. I am going to do something more fun because I'm feeling whimsical. I am going to do, because you know my machine has a few stitches. No thank you, Katniss. Uh, if you look really close here, I just think this kind of looks like a, a tree leaf limb type thing going on here. So I'm gonna go with this blue in the middle. That's calling to me. And basically, along the back here, we're gonna be top stitching to keep that down. So we don't have to worry about it fraying because we've already done the zigzag, but we wanna keep it in that position. So for my machine, if I just go slightly past the presser foot, that sews right where I need it to sew. So I do not own all the sewing machines in the world, so I cannot promise that works for you. I don't know where I would put if I had all the sewing machines in the world. Don't get in too much of a hurry when you're doing a decorative stitch because they take longer. This is the moment to check because you want to make sure that you got through um, the whole thing. Like you didn't like skip a section where it's going to hang down later. So um, I succeeded in that. So now I'm going to go do the same thing to the other sleeve. I don't know if you can tell um, the top stitch. I think it looks a little whimsical and cute. It's, it's a minor detail. No one else other than me will probably ever notice this, but I wanted to put it there. So therefore I did. So next we're going to take your sleeve and we're going to fold it in half, lining up the bottom and the top point there. And then we're going to put a pin right in the center of the top. So not the bottom where we did the cuff, just right across the top in the center. Now we've got a pin. Move that to the side just for a second. This is the main piece of the sleeper where we sewed the shoulders. So this is the front and this is the back. I'm going to open it up. So there's the shoulder still. And I do it this way first just so you can see both right sides of the fabric are on top at this point. And we're going to line up with this seam. That's the center point we're lining up with. And I'm just going to flip this over. Oh, I've got fun ambiance. You got him, Izzy? Yes. Okay. Siblings are there. He's just grumpy. We think he's getting some teeth. Okay, so the pin is lined up with the shoulder. And at this point, I turn the whole project to make it easier. And where that pin is and where the seam is, I'm going to throw in another pin, and that is our center point. And I'm going to take out the one that was in there. And then I'm um, looking for this point um, to line up with the end of the sleeve. So then I'll pin those two. It's where it turns before it goes down. So and I'll put the pin in there. And then there's this over here. I'm going to line this up. Put a pen in there. And then it's a matter of kind of manipulating the fabric so we can get a couple more pens in between the centers and the sides. I got that. It's stretchy fabric, so um, if it's not quite, see how this is a little bit longer down here? So I'm just kind of stretching the top layer a little bit to fit the sleeve, and it'll all be good once it's sewn. There we 
we go. So we'll do the exact same thing to the other side, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you the full stitch with this one. I'm gonna get back to a normal straight stitch. Ooh, my machine feels warm, it's right in the sun. And then um, just make sure, see how this is kind of bunched up on the bottom? As you're sewing, you just take your time and you kind of move things and make sure that they continue to stay flat as you're sewing. Or you'll be having some fun with the seam ripper if you get something in the bottom that you shouldn't have there. Once again, lining up with the hole in the presser foot, not the edge, the hole. And it's an eighth inch. I'm go a little bit, back it up, and then keep going. Oops, I was on the wrong. I had the straight stitch, but I had it on blue still, so. There we go. We don't need a triple stitch for this. It's all good. So this has the tendency, the bottom keeps wanting to sneak under. So just once again, taking my time, I'm gonna keep pulling that over as I sew. Trying to keep those matched up. I can feel it bunching again. So you see all that stuff that's trying to bunch under there? I'm gonna take a moment, straighten that out. Anything is better than seam ripping. It's so frustrating when you have to take something out. moment where we see did we mess it up is it awesome so I'm gonna turn it over and yay um, so things to look out for see how this is a little bit shorter here it could have gone completely down and it might not be both pieces through so just check it over real quick and if you're good um, if it had not gone down quite enough I wouldn't necessarily seam rip that I might just add a little more stitch to it um, to make sure it's secure, but that's up to you. I'm gonna put a zigzag, and I typically like to flip. I was sewing this way, I like to flip it because that's my double check to make sure that I don't need to seam rip or add a little more straight stitch to anything. So I'm put the zigzag along the edge. Once again, it's all bunching up. You don't wanna get anything with that section. gonna go do the exact same thing with the other sleeve and then I'll come back this is my sewing unhelper yeah you really shouldn't be up here I keep putting you down on the ground no 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 Okay, the next thing we're gonna be working with is H, which is the zipper edging. And I just wanted to show you on a finished one where, where that is and why the fabric placement might matter to you. So this over here is the where it ends up and it's like behind the zipper and it's like keeping the baby from getting pinched by the zipper. Just one more protective layer in there. So. Um, that is where it's going to wind up. So if you have a really pronounced like stripey pattern, you would not want to have it going sideways um, in there. So just throw that, or if it's like a very obvious, this is the top and this is the bottom fabric, you're gonna to want to be careful and make sure that the step I'm showing you for the top is actually what's the top. Taking that piece of zipper edging and whatever your top is, if that really matters for you, I could literally flip this and you would never know. Folding that in half, you can put a pin in that if that makes you feel happy and more comfortable. Um, we are going to straight stitch right along that top, lining up with that hole in the presser foot. Back it up a little. And then I'm just gonna flip it and do a zigzag too. So 
there's that. Then I'm gonna flip it right side out like that. And um, once again, you can put pins in if you want, but this, where it's open on the side, I'm just gonna zigzag all the way down. perfectly lined up. Oh no! You're never gonna see it. So we're actually gonna zigzag in the front here all the way down the front right and the front left panel because um, it's just hard to do later. Try not to stretch it. I'm doing the same thing. So this is the center of the garment and this is the front left. I'm gonna do this one from the bottom because that's easier with the machine. give you a little caution here so I have made a ton of these sleepers while I have been figuring out this pattern and my last one I made I don't know if I just all the fabrics have different stretchiness and whatever that I've been using I've been using stuff that I bought stuff that I just randomly had you name it so what it is supposed to be at the finished product here is you might see a little bit of metal from the end of the zipper um, I've tried them with slightly stretchy fleece, which I would not recommend the fleece as much. I'm gonna see how that fits later and I'll have a, more of an opinion there, but you see how it goes all the way to the end and it's sewed up neatly. Um, I've had it where the zipper was too long and I had to cut it with the fleece. Um, but with this one from Joann's, um, I'm gonna have to do a little hand stitching. It did not quite enclose it when I put the foot piece on. So just something to watch out for um, as you're sewing. We're gonna take the zipper, I've got it opened up, and I'm just gonna kind of rock the whole thing woo, this way. I'm gonna line up with the top here. And if anything, you might wanna come slightly down just so you don't have that risk of it not. It's, it's really just different types of stretch, I think is what it comes down to. So I'm not even doing, I'd say that's like a 16th of an inch space that I left there. Don't go crazy with it. And then on top of that, this is our neck, sorry, our zipper edging. And this is where we did that seam and this is where we zigzagged. I'm gonna put the zigzag portion towards the side with the zipper, not where the metal or the plastic combs are, but on the right side of that. And this is not actually gonna start until you see this metal tooth where the zipper doesn't come up past that point. I'm gonna start this right there, like line up with that. And then it's like three layers that we're pinning here. So that can be a little tricky. So once again, this has its eighth of an inch and this is lining up with that metal tooth. And I'm gonna start pinning all the way down. Just keep moving up that zipper layer to the edge. The reason I have zigzagged both of these things um, in advance is so they don't come unraveled, but it's really hard with the metal combs of the zipper and the zipper foot, you can't do the zigzag anyway, but it's like really hard to get close enough otherwise. So I just kind of did those things out of order. Um, anyway. Mm. 
didn't get that quite far over. It's, it's hard with the three layers, so just take your time so that everything is getting lined up properly. As we near the bottom here, we're not gonna go quite to the edge. This is wanting to fold over because I have done the zigzag, so I'm straightening it out. Try not to stretch it. Which is one of the frustrating things about knits. Well, we want these babies to be comfy in their PJs. Don't we wish we could all just stay in our PJs all day? Okay, so I'm up to the point where I am a few inches from the end and I am at risk of hitting that part of the zipper. So I am gonna put a sideways pin that says, stop joking it, don't go any further. Oh, I already put my zipper foot on. I don't remember doing that. Okay, pregnancy brain is an awesome, scary thing. All right, so we've got our zipper foot on. <laughs> and we're gonna have a straight stitch and I've got this lined up here. So once again, we've got two layers here, but then three layers here. So I'm gonna start at the top. We're gonna line up, you see there's a metal ridge in the center of my zipper foot. I'm going to line up the right side of the fabric with that. I'm trying to see past the camera to my machine. I do have it on the straight stitch. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit and then I'm going to back it up. So reverse. Reverse to the end a little. You don't ever want to start right on the end or it can suck all the fabric into your machine. And then that's a big nightmare. It stretches it. You got to clean it out. Done it multiple times. So you can see it's kind of like bunching up because I have like two layers just in this zipper edging, and then there's the zipper and everything below. My tendency, because I don't want this to go too long, is to kind of like pick it up and push that roll under. So it's just encapsulated in there because um, I don't want to just keep moving it down because that would be stretching. So it's wanting to creep over once again because I've got all these layers. So every once in a while I'm just pushing it over. This is not a place to get in a hurry. starting to creep too far to the right. It's a very small window to try to stay in. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna give you an option. You do not have to do this. However, um, you know, like my babies don't stay in newborn very long. So my tendency would be like, me, this doesn't matter. First, we're gonna flip it over and make sure we really did get through all three layers. Yes, we did. Um, so you could be done right there with that step, but I'm gonna actually go over it one more time because if this was like a bigger size for my babies and I was gonna be in it longer, I would wanna make sure that I don't ever have to mend a zipper. Um, because it's come unraveled from the side. So, which is one more thing to maybe um, make this last longer where you're not trying to sew something back in. So that is what it looks like from the outside. Super cute. And um, now we got to do this bottom part. So we're going to take out this pin. We're going to take out this pin and we're going to zip up. So the zipper's in the other direction out of the way. And then, once again, we can do this twice or just once, but we are going to straight stitch the rest of the way down this zipper. I'm gonna put a pin in, because it is three layers. Do not panic. You can see 
this comes down longer, this is shorter. It's all in what has been stretched or not stretched and the foot piece is going to fix all of that and I'll trim what is hanging off the edge at that point. Bunch wants to go in there. And just to be consistent, I will double that section as well. This side of the zipper is a little bit easier because it's just going to be the zipper and the fabric. We don't have the zipper edging piece so I have it open so you can see this is the top of the zipper and we're gonna take this and do the same thing where we turn it towards the other side so I'm gonna pin about an eighth of an inch from the top lined up with the side I'm gonna put my pen this way because I'm actually gonna go um, backwards with this one. So, and I find it easier to turn the whole project inside out at this point so that I'm not dealing with that other side. So, this is still the top and I'm gonna pin all the way until the almost bottom. So this is so much easier than the three layers. As you can see, I didn't get my little eighth of an inch. I'm gonna scoot that down a little. It moved on me. So I'm gonna put my sideways pin at this point cause I'm near the metal zip. stop me so I don't go there so once again this is upside down from how we worked the other one I could move the zipper foot to the other side it's totally doable but I'm not gonna do it because I don't feel like it so lining up slightly past where that pin is so lined up with the metal ridge with the right side of the project straight stitching Closer to the zipper, so. Okay, once again, you could double stitch that, but I'm not even gonna be consistent in my own project because I'm just feeling rebellious. So there you go, that's how I am. And then I'm zipping that out of the way so that I can do this last bit here. to the neck binding eye which you cut on the fold and um, it's really important that this be stretchy this way so it doesn't really matter if it's stretchy this way if it's just a two-way stretch but this is super important so um, just throwing that out there now okay this is very similar to what we did with the zipper we're gonna fold it in half with the right sides touching and we are just gonna run a straight stitch a zigzag along the side. So I'm lining up with the hole, doing an eighth inch. And then flipping it. And I'm not 
gonna have you watch because it's time consuming, but we're gonna do the exact same thing on. I've got both sides um, straight stitched and zigzagged, and now we're gonna turn it right side out. like that. And we're gonna fold it in half long ways. And put a pin in the center. Going through both thicknesses there. Then we're gonna do the same thing with the sleeper. So we're gonna take, um, let's put the zippers together basically at that point. And we're finding that center hack. And um, opening that up. So we've got a pen in the center of the actual garment and in the neck binding. And I'm gonna flip it over so we see the right side of the fabric, and this is identical both sides, so take your pick, doesn't really matter at that point. Gonna line up those two center points. Get a third pin, just so I'm not missing that. And then taking out those. And then, this is where we're gonna have to stretch. If you see, we have less neck than we have garment, and that is on purpose, because we need it to stretch so it looks good. So I'm gonna take this all the way over, to um, where the zipper is lined up on top together. And I'm gonna put a pin in. And then I'm gonna gently stretch my neck, trying not to stretch the um, garment below, and put a few more pins in here. It'll stretch right back and pull everything where it needs to be after we sew it. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So, take the edge over, line it up with the zipper. And by lined up with the zipper, I don't seem to be quite getting over the zipper. So, anyway, it's all good. There you go, I got it over all the way. It keeps moving, stretchy fabrics. Okay, so I've got all the way to the zipper on both sides. Now I'm gonna stretch just the neck and put a couple more pins in. You are never gonna guess this, but we are gonna straight stitch and zigzag. So this is that point where I put my zipper down a little bit lower so I told you that eighth of an inch, whatever. So I just need to make sure that I'm getting that caught up in here. So I'm gonna do a little bit of straight stitch and then back up. And I might have to stitch a little lower if I didn't get that quite right. See, this is kind of bunching up because I pulled the neckline, but it is worth it. If you don't pull that neckline, it's just gonna look weird. So this is where I didn't do so good. And you may have the same issue. So this right here, it slipped down while I was sewing. I did manage to get both sides that the zipper is in, but I'm gonna go one more time. So I, I sewed this way the first time. I'm gonna go one more pass because there are just a couple spots where I'm gonna go a little bit lower. So I guess I'm going a little bit past my eighth of an inch seam allowance. Um, but that to me is preferable to seam ripping. <laughs> I just don't like it. So I'm um, lining up a little more with the foot for this pass than I am the hole. Because as you can see right here, it is just barely 
caught up in it and I just don't want my neckline to unravel. It might hold a few washes through the sewing, or through the machine, but I don't want to um, have to mend anything. I want to snuggle that new baby. Because my old baby, my two-year-old, doesn't want to sit still very long. Okay, so now we have gotten through those are the spots where I had just barely on there are now nicely encapsulated. So it made my collar a little bit shorter. No one's going to notice. And I didn't have to use the seam ripper. So you've, you've been given freedom. You can rip that out and be more careful as you stitch through. Have a higher standard or don't. And then we're zigzagging. For this next thing, we're going to top stitch over that collar that we just did all that work on. So we're going to turn it like this. You're making sure that this seam is pressed down and we're going to line up and hopefully my bobbin thread lasts because it looks like it's going. So where I'm trying to sew is between these two fingers. That's where my seam is. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm lining up this um, seam right here with the hole in the presser foot. I'll try to keep that at that distance all the way around. And you can just feel, if it feels bulky over here, that that's not over. So just use your fingers. It doesn't hurt to look and make sure. Might be a little tricky. This is the shoulder seam, so there are quite a few layers at that point. You can see how this is a little bunched up in here because we stretched it. So just make sure you're keeping it the same direction. The other shoulders, so once again, might be. I've had, depending on the fabric, you might get kind of stuck in that moment. You might have to lift the foot and help it along a little, so totally depends on the fabric. This fabric has been very nice. It's um, thin, but not like cheap thin, where it's like, oh, it's gonna instantly tear, but it's like been easy to work with. Unless I have a total pregnant brain mind lapse, I will put the link for this exact fabric in case you want to try it in the description. Okay, so I'm snipping threads. Look how cute that is. If you can even see it because I'm using a coordinating thread, but I just like all these little extra details since I'm making this with love for my baby. Um, I get to make all those little choices. Um, it would still be exciting if I was making this for a niece. Um, or a friend's baby. Isn't that cute? Cute little neck in there. Okay. So, and I would say nine times out of ten, see that side is slightly higher than that side. So, I don't know. I'm not a perfectionist. Um, but if that really bothers you, that's something to look out for before you do your, um, I would say your top stitch would be a chance to fix that. You're like, oh my goodness, it's actually starting to look like a baby sleeper. All right, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna turn it inside out. Whoop. And we are gonna make it look even more like a baby sleeper because we are gonna match um, one of the sleeves, doesn't matter which side you're on. So really make sure, um, unless you want this to have the thing that I keep doing with my collar every time, you wanna make sure this is really lined up and, um, I'm even doing the pen sideways. I am very inconsistent in my pen. Sometimes I go this way, sometimes I go this way. It totally depends on what I'm doing and my mood. And then I'm gonna line up um, right at the armpit, that seam, I'll put a pen in there. And then I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom and line up the other side and bottom piece. 
So from this point on, see, I'm gonna put this one this way. See, I'm going crazy. So from this point on, it's just about um, putting a few extra pins in to keep it from moving and stretching while you're sewing. So put a couple here. And lining up with the hole in the presser foot. So once again, it's that, I think it was an eighth inch or a quarter inch. I just can't remember numbers at this point. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit and then I'm gonna press the reverse and back it up and keep going. important section right here. So I'm gonna go real, put that seam under. I get right up to the point where the, the shoulder, or the arm connects to the shoulder. And then I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna lift the presser foot and turn. Look how fancy that was. Um, keep it. Make sure the needle's in the fabric when you do that step. Curl up a little. Oh. Okay, and then you guessed it, we're gonna zigzag. Cause we don't want all this coming undone. We've worked too hard to do it. Okay, go do the same exact thing on the other side. I'm gonna flip this over. And if you look on the very back, I did a dart on each side of the leg. Can you see that's all folded over? So, boom. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna start on the side that doesn't have the zipper first, because it's easier. Open this up and I'm gonna line up the bottom pieces and the side and put a pin right in there. And um, I only put a dart on one piece of the thing because I just like minimal <laughs> approach. So what we're gonna do is once you've lined up those bottoms, we're gonna put a needle in the center of this dart and we are going to stitch from here to here and then do a zigzag. So I'm gonna do the same thing. It's a little trickier on the leg with the zipper just because it's more layers, so. Lining up the bottom. It's gonna give a little more detail here. So this is the edging for the zipper and the zipper are both to the side. And this is just the one layer going on there. And we are going from the bottom to the middle of this dart. Not dart, notch. Pregnancy brain is intense. Okay, so the triangle that we cut out because of the notch that I had in the thing. Darts are totally different. Yeah. Okay, so getting straight stitch. Once again, we're gonna line up with that hole in the presser foot. A little bit. And this one feels a little weird. This is the side that has the zipper. So there is a lot going on in there. So just make sure um, it's the right stuff going on. Like this is folding over. I want that that way. And we're getting to that middle of the dart. And we're gonna stop. Reinforce it a little bit going back if you want. Not really necessary. And I'm gonna flip this so it's a little less um, in the world of, no, I pulled on it too much. I'm still gonna have to cut that. Darn. Okay. So, from exactly where that dart is in the center, 
Gonna zigzag down. Gonna do the same thing on the other leg, except it'll be easier because the zigzag, I mean the zipper is more complicated. So straight stitch, zigzag on the other leg. Okay, so we've stitched our legs and now we have this lovely hole access point to put in our crotch piece. So, I mean, so much time change in diapers, you know, exciting stuff. So we are going to put in, if you need to see a pin there in the exact center right here, see there's kind of like a triangle shape in the legs and throw a pin there. And the same thing on the back. The back doesn't have as perfect of a triangle, so I'm actually gonna fold that in half so I can see where that center is. So getting a center point there. And then this is um, the crotch piece that we cut out. And remember, we just needed one, but it was easier to cut two and throw one away. So I'm just gonna discard one. If I mess up this one, I've got another shot. So I did not make the top and bottom symmetrical, but I gotta tell you, I, half the time I don't remember which side's the front and the back. So I have sewn this like this way, this way, whatever, and it's always gonna work out. So what matters is that the pointy sides are the sides. And one of these is gonna be the top and one's the bottom. I tried to do the bigger, the wider section for the booty, but seriously, I've forgotten like half the time. So just to remove any pressure on that needing to be perfect. So I'm gonna put um, folded it in half, putting a pin in the top and the pin in the bottom. And once again, this is wider and I'm gonna to try to put the narrow one in front. But um, if you mess that up, I really don't think you will notice because yeah, half of my sleepers I made were that way. All right, so we've got the pretty sides touching each other and I'm matching up the top center I'll put a pin in there get rid of those other two pins then I'm gonna do the same thing on the back so the back center I'm gonna match up the center of the crotch piece such a delightful word um, let's see here I tried pooling some friends for a classier word, but we all came up empty, so. My cameraman is yawning. Am I being boring? Okay, so now we've got the side where it's pointed and that's gonna go right where this dart is that we sewed down for the leg. So I'm gonna put that right in there and put a pin. Same thing on the other side. So the side piece, I'm gonna put that right where we sewed that dart. And put a pin. Great. And then it's just a matter of um, stretching the leg piece a little bit to fit the crotch piece. And putting a couple pins in. And just continue to rotate around. So once again, stretching the leg piece a little. Um, and the same thing over here. And I think this is the hardest part of the whole project is sewing this section. So that's just been my personal opinion. I attempted to find some better way to do this but eventually I just gave up and said it was good enough. <laughs> All right, and then this to here. They look good. Okay, so like everything else, we're gonna do a straight stitch all the way around. It, I find it a little bit easier if I just focus on half 
and then do the zigzag for that and then do that other side. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, still complicated, a little tricky, but um, the best way I have tried it. So, so starting right, be careful you don't sew into that layer with all the zippers. So over that pin either so I'm gonna get it positioned and then I'm removing this first pin before I start sewing I'm gonna back it up just a little see this isn't quite far over it's trying to slink back this bottom layer keeps trying to slide away and that's just going to make me have to sew it again, so keep an eye on that. About a quarter of the way around. Okay, and this is that halfway point where I am going to stop and turn it. So, cut that off. So first I'm going to double check. Did it go through all or both of the layers all the way around? Yes, it did. Then we're going to zigzag right along that side that we just straight stitched. Ooh, it's tricky. All the fabric wants to bunch up under itself. Then I'll have to seam rip. I don't want to seam rip. This is where I had my notch. So that side is done. So now we're gonna do the other side. So starting where the notch is on the leg. Making sure we don't have any other layers under there. I'm gonna straight set. Oh, this is sliding under. least favorite step. Can't say it enough. Last little bit. Okay, and then we're gonna flip it and put that zigzag over it. Just like the zipper, if you're gonna reinforce a section, the crotch piece is a good one to do. If you really want this to last a long time because just think about that big, you know, we use cloth diapers, so big diaper, putting pressure on there and wear it down. So I probably won't have the cloth diapers yet in this size. Had a traumatic umbilical cord incident with the last kid and it's like, I think I'm gonna wait a couple weeks. <laughs> like the cloth diapers like came up higher and they were like rubbing against it and yeah. We're gonna turn it right side out. So I'm gonna unzip this a little from the inside. So we can see what it looks like. very exciting and the next step I think my child babysitting just ran out in the other room I hear an unhappy boy all right so this is the foot top and we have two of these so I'm gonna set one here I'm gonna set one here and 
then we'll get pinning. So these have notches too, little triangles in the middle. So flip it where right sides are touching. And we're gonna get that triangle in the middle lined up, perfect. And put a pin right through the middle notch. And then we're gonna put a pin on each side. So I'm gonna turn this and line it up sideways like this. Do the same thing on the other side of the foot. So I'm gonna turn this way. You can put a couple more pins in there if that makes you feel better. We'll do the exact same thing with the other foot. Not gonna show that. And we're gonna straight stitch. Try not to get any extra bunched layers in there. so close to being done here. We've got two of the M, which is the bottom of the foot. So I've turned the whole outfit inside out and I'm gonna take the top of this and put it with the top of that top foot piece that we just put in there like that. Put a pin in. Then I'm gonna kind of open it up and go to the very back. and Line up that. Put a pin over here. So the toes and the heel basically, they're getting a pin. And then I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna go right on this side, right in the middle. And I'll, for good measure, throw one here. See that's not lining up perfectly this time. Um, this is always slightly different depending on how I stuck in the seam line or not. Okay, and then we've got this other side. I'm gonna put one in the middle. And one on either side. So I did the non-zipper foot first because it's a little easier to me. But now we're gonna go do that foot with the zipper. So same concept, just a little bulkier to work with. I'm gonna pull this zipper up a little so it's out of the way. Got the top of the foot here, so we're gonna match the top of the foot piece to that. And then we're gonna do the heel. So right where the heel lines up. Saving the delights of the zipper for last, I'm gonna turn and do this side first. Center and one on each side. And the reason I have saved the zipper for the last is you kind of had to manipulate it, so it's gonna kind of fold over a little more. So just kind of this is the top of the toe, and this is that extra piece we put in the zipper. I want that laying flat on the zipper, and um. If you see, when I push that down, this bit of the zipper and that bit of the foot piece kind of hang out, and that is what I want. I want to line up this circle, and I'm going to put these pins in. And I'm going to straight stitch around. This is a little bent to get that to fit in there. Um, this is kind of like where we fix whatever happened with the stretching along the front piece when we put the zipper in. So I'm gonna show doing this one, but we're actually gonna trim that stuff down when we're done so it will be completely out of the way. So all the fun bulky stuff. Be 
you're really slow here, you might, oh, you might do that. You might hit that metal buckle of the zipper. I'm telling you, every sleeper I've done, it's been in a slightly different place and I actually broke my needle. So learn from me. As I was trying to warn you, I ran over it. So I'm gonna have to replace my needle now, so I'll be right back. I've got my new needle in here and I'm actually, because this one is just right on there, I'm gonna do some hand cranking and I'm gonna try to go a little bit closer in on the foot than I would to get past that. Let's see if I'm past, because I can feel the metal thing. Yeah, it's really close. Okay, and then as soon as I can, because I'm a little past where my seam should be, Good, 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 and then I'm gonna turn. So I went a little bit more in on the foot um, than I had in the other spots to work around that. So just be really careful. Once again, I had the project where it did not quite go down far enough. I'm gonna have to hand sew in this one. It was just a little too much in the foot space. So it's been different every time, depending on how stretchy the fabric is. I've gone all the way around. I checked that it's gone through all the layers it needs to go through. And now is the point I'm going to trim everything that's hanging out past the foot. So that's the zipper, extra fabric, you name it. That's all going away. And I'm gonna zigzag around, but I'm gonna be really careful. That's easier to show you now. See that metal right there? That's what I sewed through and broke a needle. So I'm gonna go real close to the edge for this section right here. Um, so I don't break another needle and I'll save that for the end. I'm not going to show you the other foot because it is not complicated compared to this one. So you just straight stitch and zigzag around and that one will be done. flickering. It's super fun on top of what I'm trying to do. All right, so I've gone all the way around. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other foot and there's only one more piece. Yay! Look at those cute little feet. Um, real quick, I realized I forgot to show you. I have not found this to be super important with the sleeper, but the onesie I'm designing, it's crucial. If you want, if you feel like it's not laying down enough here in the arm, this is a lot of bulk. So if you just wanna do a slight cut, just right there, don't go through the stitch, just a little cut there, that does allow that to go down a little more easily. Like if you have thicker fabric, that might be an issue. So I'm just gonna do them both sides. I have not done that um, to all of them, but that is just something if you're having problems there, that could be like you put it on the baby and you feel like it's pinching the arm, like whatever. And then we're gonna go ahead and reverse again dangerously close to done. Okay, we've got piece J here, which is the tab. Um, you don't have to put this on here. I have bought sleepers that don't have a tab, but um, this is what keeps the zipper from poking up in the baby's neck. And I like that to not be poking up in the baby's neck. So, all right, straight stitch all the way around this. It's super fun because it's this crazy curve. at it you want to make sure you actually did have a good curve shape if you got a little wonky this one shows when you flip it so all right and then we're going to zigzag around too cut all those 
crazy threads everywhere. We're gonna flip this inside out. We're going to zigzag along the bottom here. So not where we did the curve, just the, un, the open, un, whatever, unfinished edge, yeah. Zigzag. Okay, I did not mark this on the pattern. So you're gonna close up your zipper. And then, sorry, cameraman, I just keep moving around. They see how the zipper is poking up here? That would totally hit the baby's neck. So push down that zipper. This is another reason I kind of dropped it lower here to have a little space there. So you're gonna line this up right with that zipper so that when it folds over, it's gonna keep that zipper tab down. So you can put a pin in there or I'm just gonna hold it. I'm gonna unzip this so I can get to the machine. And for this, we just need a straight stitch. right over the edge where I zigzagged with the straight stitch. I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna move it out for a second. I'm gonna fold it over and I'm gonna top stitch right over that. And then back up, reverse it. Okay, only one thing remains. And I have two different ways of showing you that. And that is putting on our snaps. If you remember at the beginning, I told you there were gonna be two options for the end, the sew on snap or using the snap pliers. I'm gonna show you the snap pliers first cause it's fast. Um, but I will show you on another project, the sew on because I've done that for a lot of them too. I like that cause I can sit there and watch a show and um, be more comfy than my desk. <laughs> okay, so if you have followed, I'll put links to these, but these are the Dritz snap-on pliers. I'm using the yellow and the orange. They come with all these different colors for different sizes and stuff. But for the 7 16 snaps, this is what I need. I'm gonna take one of the spiky looking snap pieces and put that on the yellow side. And I kind of take my nails and push that in and half the time it still falls out anyway. And then for the other side, I am going to use the one that looks like an Atari joystick. See how it's got like the pointy button coming out. We're gonna take the joystick piece and put it down in that orange hole and kind of push it, hear that little snap. So at this point, I should say, this is not a pattern piece. I just cut out a really small piece of extra fabric. So I probably should have made a pattern piece, but I didn't because I didn't really bother with this with the sew on section. I probably should. Maybe I'll do that this time to be more, you know, a better example. Anyway, you could use interfacing. You, if you don't have enough of this fabric, you could use like a little, like something like a white t-shirt scrap that's not gonna call attention to it. So where we're gonna go is see I've got my um, tab here and I'm going to very technically put my finger under the tab. Wow, this is a technical operation. Pull down the zipper. You could use um, fabric marking if you want. I'm going to put this um, scrap piece in here so that that is to help. And I'm gonna double check that I've got my thing in the right spot. Okay, yep, so right in the center of here. So the part that is the Atari joystick, the orange section of the pliers needs to be on top. And I'm just gonna slide it in right over where I have that positioned and pinch. And this is where the magic happens. Pinch really hard. Um, voila, that's all set. And you've got that little piece there. You could trim that down if you want. Um, it's totally up to you. You could have zigzagged it if you're really worried. This stuff doesn't really ravel much, so I'm not concerned about it. You could do multiple layers of that if you want it to be really strong, but that's what I have done. Okay, so now we have to do the corresponding, or the reverse side rather, and um, 
We're gonna do that right on the edge here. So once again, on the yellow side, I'm gonna take a spiky, looks like some sort of medieval weapon here. I'm gonna put that in the bottom. And then on the orange side, this is tricky. I have literally written on top of my instructions that the rounded side goes up. So if you look at this piece, one of them is dipping in a little bit and the other protrudes a little bit. So the side that protrudes is going to go up, like facing the center. Now, one way to test this, I'll do it wrong. If I put the rounded side down and I try to push, it doesn't really wanna make contact, it just kinda of slides around. If I flip that over and I push, it snaps. Did you hear that snap? That's the money maker. So just be really careful at this point. If you think about this, this is the piece that we need to touch the part that looks like an Atari joystick, if you were in the 80s with me. Um, anyway, love Atari. We still have an Atari, my husband and I still play, we're cool. Okay, so um, that orange piece is going on the bottom of the tab and I'm lining it up in the center. And then once again, I'm gonna push really hard. Urgh. We want you to stay on there forever, snap. And then pull it off, voila. And this is the moment you know if you did it right. Oh, sigh of relief. Um, I will tell you I have messed these up before and um, it's been awful. And my husband's like, YouTube it, there's gotta be a way to get that off. And he was so right. So I recommend that you try this on a scrap of fabric, which is what I did. But let's say you have messed it up, which I did not, but let's say you've messed it up. Side cutter pliers, maybe yours are not scary, rusty and old, but when we were in our 20s, we used to leave tools outside. <clears throat> we, as in my husband. So um, here's this, he's gotten so much better. Um, I'm putting it, don't pinch your fingers, right on the fabric surrounding the snap. So if you have like made this whole thing and you just messed up this step, ugh, it's tricky. Just like magic, it peels it off. So that's the coolest thing ever. And then you peel that piece out. So it still leaves some holes. So I really recommend that you test this on some scraps first, but um, isn't that cool? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the last way. But if you chose this snap, you're done. Congratulations, uh, stick around to the end. I know this has been long, but if you wanna see how I cut out a newborn onesie, and a sleeper out of the same half yard of fabric. I was pretty excited about that. So otherwise you're done. And uh, if you like this video, please take a moment and like and subscribe if you haven't already. This is how to do the sew on snaps. Once again, I would recommend that you cut a small scrap of fabric to make it like reinforced. You could use interfacing, whatever. Um, I'm gonna do a do as I say, not as I do moment cause I don't feel like doing that. And therefore I don't have to. <laughs> okay, I'm going to separate. You can see it's like punched over the cardboard. The top piece off. The top piece I'm gonna set to the side. Um, I'm gonna use the little piece on the bottom first. So they actually look very similar. If you look, they both look like Atari joysticks, but one is slightly thicker. And that's the one that goes over the little one. So setting that to the side, the little one from the back. And I'm going to position this based on where the tab comes over too, because I'm gonna put the other piece like a right about here in the center of that. So this needs to come over more. Oh, it's such an exact science when you're working with Johanna. All right, there we go. I've got a doubled and knotted thread and a corresponding color, coordinating color. I'm gonna unzip, I'll put my finger on here so that doesn't move. So I'm gonna, coming from the back with the needle you can do this either way, but I think it's easier if you go outside of the snap from the back and then you can go into the hole. There are four holes going around. We're gonna put, oh, probably three stitches in each of them. So that puts us at two. And three. 
you could do more if you feel like you want to make this super secure. And I'm just going to go around. Here's the next hole. So from the back, I'll go right outside of that. And then in that hole. At this point, I'm like halfway through. I've done two of the spaces, so I'm going to turn it over for a second. And I'm going to put a knot in it, just in case that unravels. Okay, continuing on. These things are tiny. Oh, my two-year-old's singing in the background. And the 10-year-old is blowing something up in a video game. They're a nice pair. Okay, one more to go. And then we'll tie that off. And now it's time to do the other side. So I'm going to zip this up again so we don't mess up our placement. So this is going to go over like this. Of course, you'd have the zipper down so it doesn't go in the baby's neck. And the part that is hollow needs to be the part that will go over that. So hollow part is what we can see. And this one, I don't want to go all the way through. So I'm actually going to start it where my knot will be like under this snap. go through there then I'll come to the side so try not to go through all the layers so we don't see this on top because it's not the prettiest if that happens it's also not the end of the world and the same thing oh see I almost did it see the needle there so I gotta go less aggressive okay there we go Okay, we're at that halfway point, so I'm going to do a quick knot. Buy you some time in the mending process if it starts coming loose. Maybe it doesn't get lost in the dryer. Well, it's been a process, but you should, if you follow the steps, have a beautiful baby sleeper at this point. Um, these are great for your own kids, great shower presents. So please let me know in the comments if you made one. Um, I would just love to know how yours turned out and all that fun stuff. Okay, tying this off. I'm a double knotter. I just, I don't know. It's like I can't trust that first one. So I typically do it twice. putting that down snap whichever way you went you are now done at this point if you did the pliers if you did the hand sew congratulations and enjoy your sleeper and as promised here is the footage of can we get a sleeper and a onesie newborn size out of the same half yard of fabric I wanted to see if it was possible I have um I got this at Joann's if you like the butterflies. 
And this is half a yard. And you know, I think she may have cut a little bit extra or a little bit short. It's never exactly cut. But I wanted to see if it was possible to do a newborn sleeper and onesie with the short sleeves out of the same um, half a yard. So I can't for sure tell until I start cutting it, but I did. Um, and I think it totally depends on what type of print you have. These butterflies, it doesn't matter what direction you're looking at. So that gave me a lot of leeway. So I have the sleeper back and the two front pieces spread out there. And then the onesie, I need to be able to do some stuff on folds. So I experimented by going like this in the middle here. I was like, is there room? I think there is for both the front and back piece of the onesie. And then, um, and lined all this stuff up over here. The arms and, you know, all that fun stuff. And I think I can do it. So I just wanted to document this. If you're really going for the frugal um, use for this newborn size, you can really get a lot done with it. So I guess um, for bigger sizes, it's that same concept. Like maybe if you get a little bit more than a half a yard, maybe like a three, quarters or something you could probably do two pieces out of it now do you want two matching pieces you know i just want to see if i could do it so but if you're giving these as gifts one person could get a sleeper one person could get the onesie i will just have two matching things but um wish me luck here we go i have cut off the main pieces of the newborn sleeper and um that way i felt safe that those were taken care of and now I'm gonna cut just um, down here, I haven't even pinned these things yet, just to see if it will work like I think it will that I can fold those. Wow, that was like cerebral. It is possible. So the center section, I've got space for both of the pieces of the onesie. I had to swap the crotch piece from the sleeper over here because I only need one of it so you can see how it's not overlapping for everything so it's just the bottom layer that will do that and then um i moved the foot piece because i needed two of that over here so if you are feeling super adventurous you could go for it um, other ideas like you know maybe you don't have quite enough maybe it's a larger size you could do the binding around the neck and legs or whatever in a different color fabric that you have scraps of as well. Or the bottom of the feet could be something that's just a different color. So, you know, play around with it. Sleeves could be a different color, you know, if you are just trying to use up some scraps. I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to Modern Homemakers if you haven't already. And um, check out, um, coming soon, um, we have a free onesie pattern and a free pants pattern both in the newborn size so um, make sure you're subscribed and get those notifications so you don't miss when those get posted can you say bye bye can you say bye bye